back. Thanks for staying with us. Foreign Affairs Minister Carl Greenwich on Thursday said that domestic issues facing Guyana could have a negative impact on the country's image internationally as the border controversy matter with Venezuela continues before the ICJ. He also thinks settling the issue will address Venezuela's recent maritime transgressions, which he says was aimed at the country gaining access to the Atlantic coast through the Ezequiel region. Here are more details. During a symposium hosted by the Guyana Trades Union Congress today, Vice President and Foreign Affairs Minister Carl Greenwich called for a united front between government and the opposition on the Guyana-Venezuela border controversy, even as the outcome of court rulings over the December 21, 2018 No Confidence Resolution looms. It was one day after the 33-32 passage of the opposition filed motion that Venezuelan Navy operatives temporarily intercepted an ExxonMobil contracted oil exploration vessel offshore the Starbrook block in Guyana's exclusive economic zone. Greenwich notes, therefore, that our internal divisions could weaken the country on the international stage. At the same time, he explains that the maritime issue cannot be sorted out unless the land controversy matter is finally put to rest. Venezuela's concern is that Although it has the longest Caribbean coast, uh, the, the, um, the eastern Caribbean islands form an arc to the east of Guyana, cutting Venezuela off from the Atlantic proper. So if they've got an ambition to be an Atlantic, uh, an Atlantic power, uh, they don't have the basis upon which to carry that out. The minister outlined that the sections of the Starbrook block where the vessel was intercepted was far removed from the area in which Guyana's western neighbor claims the Orinoco River Delta deposits. The Orinoco Delta is roughly 120 kilometers from the boundary that constitutes Guyana's EEZ. Okay? It is 120 kilometers. From there to here is another 140 kilometers. Okay? So it's not nearby. You know, you can't just wish uh, that it were a couple of miles. Greenwich says that Venezuela's 2015 decree affects the maritime boundaries of 14 Caribbean countries. And despite Guyana moving to the International Court of Justice to clear up the controversy, Bloomberg News reported on Venezuela's controversial plan to remap its Caribbean offshore oil in the next few months, which could further add to tensions with Guyana. Officials at the state-owned Petroleos de Venezuela were tight-lipped on the matter, but according to reports, the new survey will also include areas bordering fellow CARICOM nations of Grenada and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Last year, the Ghana government filed the documents at the ICJ outlining the issue being faced because of neighboring Venezuela and outlined why it believes that the court has a right to hear its case to settle the controversy over the 1899 Arbitral Tribunal Award. Shemuel Fanfare, The Evening News. On Friday, we tell you that the same day Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro was sworn in for a second term, Ghana was among 19 countries to support a resolution that refuses to recognize the legitimacy of a Maduro government and to call for fresh elections in the Spanish-speaking country. Charles Bryan has the details. This resolution was taken at the level of the Permanent Council of the Organization of American States, of which Guyana is a member. According to the resolution, the OAS would not recognize the legitimacy of Maduro's new term as president. The resolution also urges member states to use lawful diplomatic, economic, and financial measures to restore democracy to Venezuela. Among other measures, it also calls for new, free, and fair presidential elections to be held. The resolution notes that last year's election failed to meet international standards for elections and lacked legitimacy. The results of the voting is in favor 19 against 6, 8 abstentions and 1 absent. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It was only a week ago that Guyana's government had called on Venezuela to seize its intimidation tactics and respect Guyana's territory. This had followed complaints late last year from ExxonMobil that the Venezuelan Navy had intercepted one of its vessels while doing research work. The incident came at a time when Guyana has an ongoing territorial integrity case with Venezuela before the World Court. While Guyana has submitted the relevant paperwork to the International Court of Justice, the Venezuelan government is yet to join the proceedings and approached the ICJ in the hopes of a final judicial settlement of long-standing border controversies with Venezuela. Gerald Bryan, The Evening News. 
And finally reported on Saturday that over 150 public officials have been flagged for failing to declare their assets and liabilities to the Integrity Commission. More from Lakram Bagirat. The list of delinquent public officials was made public by an ad published in the state's newspaper. Today, the Office of the Integrity Commission, pursuant to Section 19 of the Integrity Commission Act, published the names of 159 public officials who have failed to submit their declarations as of December 31, 2018. The list includes 134 councillors from the various regional democratic councils across the country, including Working People's Alliance Executive member Tabitha Joy Sarabo Haley and Controversial Alliance for Change Executive Abel Citera. Meanwhile, officials from the Audit Office, Bank of Guyana and the Guyana Forestry Commission were also flagged for not declaring their assets to the Integrity Commission. Over the years, several members of Parliament and other public officials have been flagged by the Integrity Commission for their failure to declare their assets and liabilities, but none of their names appeared on the latest list. In November last year, among those flagged included Foreign Affairs Minister Carl Greenwich, Minister of Public Service Dr. Rupert Rupnerein, Minister of Public Health Valda Lawrence, and Minister of Public Infrastructure David Patterson. The Integrity Commission Act was assented to on the 24th of September 1997. The Act provides for the establishment of the Integrity Commission and makes provisions for the purpose of securing the integrity of persons in public life. The Commission aims to improve public confidence in the integrity of persons in public office by ensuring that they submit their declarations in compliance with the Integrity Commission Act. For the Evening News, Lake Rambagirat. Thanks, Lakram, and that's a wrap for this week's Weekend Review. Do join us again on Monday at 1900 hours for the evening news from all of us here at TVG Studios. Thanks for watching, and do have a safe and productive week ahead. Goodbye for now.